Oh my god. I'd have been so distraught. Gotta have your donuts, headlamp, extinguisher, grunt call, and your teddy bear. Hey guys, it is uh, 4.30 in the morning. I've been up for an hour with the baby already. Made a bottle, changed some diapers, wiped some butts. Dad life. Got up, made my coffee, and uh, I was kind of waiting to wake up to see what my cameras had said in my two different states based on where I wanted to hunt this morning. And uh, nothing popped up, so I'm just going with my regular plan A of some Kentucky public, a uh, really thick bedding area, um, which I think it's a great time to be hunting um, right now with all these bucks cruising. Camera activity has been pretty slow, but I, I had a lot more buck activity um, on foot that I've noticed. I've actually had what would be the biggest year of my life so far at five steps in Indiana. The problem is when they come by at five steps, he does a full blown sprint, not a growl, a grunt, a roar, or screaming hay at him twice as loud as I could would get him to stop. Um, but I got the kayak in the back. It's October 30th and it's cool outside, 40 degrees. And uh, I got quite a bit of a walk to get in here after I get out of the kayak because of the way I've got to have to walk to keep my scent from blowing up kind of where I'm gonna be hunting. Uh, hopefully one of these deer that I've had on camera back in here cruises by. That'd be great. I've got a really, really big 10 or 11 point. Just a huge mainframe deer. And then I've got a 9 point. Well, 7. I don't think he has any brow tines, but he's a nice mature buck. I chewed him. I had two bucks show up in the last two days uh, in the dark. Um, I don't know. Probably mid-40s deer. Nice deer. Definitely love to take them. Uh, but anything that comes by over that 130, 135 mark today. That's about my goal this year for, for Kentucky. So I hope I'm paddling one out here in about three or four hours. Well, not three or four hours, good God. Um, about five or six hours, that'd be great. That would be absolutely wonderful. Got me a new battery. Try this bad boy out. Got it officially licensed. Water's up, thank God. I'm pumped. Got everything on here. I'm excited to try out my kayak or my trolling motor for the second time. I actually tried it out on a small lake just to see if the, the, the thing would fit on there. I used a Pyre Wheels battery, did not have it registered yet. I, mean, I went out 30 feet and come back, and a game warden pulled up and was like, You got that thing registered? I'm like, Dude, you gotta be kidding me. I was like, I was just seeing if the dang troll motor would even fit on this kayak. So he cut me a break. So I got it registered. Got my life jacket. It's inside that thing. Um, could I get it out if something happened? I don't know. You know, but I'm legal. So got my platform sticks, saddle, bow, release, extra clothes. I'm gonna strap on my pack because it is freaking cold. And I'm gonna take off half what I got on now and uh, walk in. That way I don't freeze to death once I get there with sweat. Okay. So, luckily, uh, the water come up the other day, or last night, yesterday, whatever, and uh, allowed me to get up here in the woods. Most of the time I was having to walk two, three hundred yards around that way, but I just made land, fixing to make my pack up nice and neat, strip down some clothes. The wind is blowing the exact opposite way I thought it was, so we might try a little bit different access. See that light? It's somebody else coming with a kayak. There's a doe right there. She don't know where I am. The wind's blowing perfect. Okay, I lied, it's a little buck. Finally found a tree. I'm covered. That was very bad. Nothing went the way I thought it was going to, which is always, you know, pretty much the case. I'm gonna change in my clothes and 
can get up this tree. It's already six o'clock. You can't ask for a better situation. I probably got a 200 yard bubble that way that I come from that I didn't. 200 yards that way this way that I'm not worried about a deer smelling me as far as where I walked. As you can see this big hill behind me. Once I got up the drainage, I got on this hill and booked it across to here dropped straight down to this tree. Now I scouted this back in, oh gosh, August, September. And there's a bunch of crab apple trees right down through here. I think that's what they're called anyways. I could be wrong. These deer bed underneath of them. It's tall grass. You see it's real thick out in front of me. <laughs> they select cut a lot of this right here. A lot of it's just grown up grasses. A lot of brows and uh, perfect doe bedding. That meeting up with this hardwoods right behind me, right through here, with a north wind, northwest wind blowing right in my face. Thermals drifting my scent up this, this hill by me. These bucks ought to be cruising the north side of this bedding area, scent checking any does that are bedded up in this thing. It's about 500 yards long. I do, ex I mean, there's no reason I shouldn't see at least a decent buck this morning. I'm pretty excited. Should be a good day. right there he's got half his rack broke on or I'd shoot him <laughs> that dumb it was he got half his rack broken that sucks was not a fan of the grunts. <laughs> I'm just assuming he's had his ass whooped because he's missing half his rack. Boy, it got me fired up. Gosh dang, man, I just seen that one side coming through there. I thought, yep, he's a goner. I probably shouldn't have even grunted at him or messed with him, but I couldn't help it. Let's see if I can call him in. I got nervous and went right back where he come from. Never did smell me or see me, so that's a good thing.
because I haven't put out any hunts lately. And I said, well, if I can, if I can switch my butthead to where I don't have to use my good exodus, because those are the ones I trust, if I can switch it over to that rage hypodermic that I've got, you know, I had some extra ones around the house. I got them cheap on Amazon for like 15 bucks. Some stupid overstock deal. But I said, if I can switch out that arrow, I will 110% shoot that doe if she gives me a chance. And I freaking went to draw the dang thing. And I shoot right over top this dead limb. yards and died. Like that. I mean, she's dead on a freaking door now. Heck yeah. Then I brought my game bags with me just in case that happened. Because I don't know if I want to drag her all the way out with the kayak or not. get down now. No joke, there's like five or six buzzards circling right now. My doe's laying right down there. I know they see her. I mean, how else do they, they find what they're hunting or looking for or scavenging for? I guess they see it or smell it or something. I don't know. I'm not a biologist. I'm barely a deer hunter. But what? Get out of here. Yeah, I'm about to get down for the get down there and start messing with her been a fun hunt all right guys there's the split tree that i hunted in and uh fixing to drag this doe out i'm gonna attempt to do it like this now i really want to paddle this whole deer out because i want to get some cool pictures there's a very good chance that ain't happening this is gonna be hard i got a long way to go it ain't going that bad but it ain't going that good she keeps getting caught on stuff you see they logged a bunch of this right here they left a bunch of cedar trees just laying for whatever reason and she keeps getting her butt stuck on them I'm sure it's painful here we go All right, we made it 745 yards up this drainage all the way to the top. And I just about killed myself getting her down here. What time is it? Took me right at an hour and 15 minutes. <sighs> Told myself I was gonna paddle one out this year and by God, I'm going to. I guess it could have counted as quartering them up, but I wanted the real deal. I definitely won't shoot another doe back in there. I promise. <laughs> but good morning. I'm gonna get her loaded up and uh, get out of here. This has uh, been a heck of a learning experience, I can tell you that. You think you're just gonna shoot a deer, throw it in a kayak, and and paddle it out? I guess maybe if you shoot the thing right beside the water. Uh, definitely got some kinks to work out, but this has been a very memorable hunt for me. I could not be more pleased with what I come out with today. Uh, went in looking for a buck, but I hate passing up an opportunity for a little bit more meat in the freezer. And uh, we're getting a little low, so it feels pretty good. And, um, oh man, I'm exhausted. That was a lot of work getting her out of here. Hopefully I can get back in here eventually in the next couple days, weeks, whatever, and tag one of these bucks. Um, got a quota hunt at a army base I'm heading to tomorrow and Sunday and uh, hopefully I can tag something up there as a bonus animal and um, still got Indiana which I'm using my kayak a lot more on than Kentucky so pleased to get this big Kentucky doe 
thank God she's not too big because I'd still be dragging her and uh, just happy for a beautiful morning, a safe hunt, and uh, my first water access deer. Feels really good. Thanks for watching, by the way, guys. And, and I don't want to be one of those guys because I don't make no money off of this. I could care less about sponsorships or whatever. I've been doing this a long time. I just enjoy doing it for fun. So if you like what you watch, subscribe. And uh, I try to put out as much stuff as possible. This season got off to a fast start, and then it slowed way down when I started hunting uh, for some of the bigger bucks that I've had on camera this year. But uh, like I said, hard to pass up an opportunity at a big old doe for sure. Thanks for watching.